two premium Wear OS smartwatches, three important health measurements. The Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 versus the Skagen Falster Gen 6. Which one is more accurate? The results are... Phew! Kudadag, we're DHRME. Definitely having real meat every day. Let's start with the heart rate monitor. For this, we wore the Polar H10 chest sensor and the smartwatches during a workout. And no, you're not getting a shot of us putting on the chest strap. Well, maybe, if you become a patron. Anyway, plotting the Skagen, Samsung, and Polar on a graph during a squash game, we see a couple of interesting things. Remember that the Polar H10 is the baseline here as it's an accurate measurement device. At the start, the Samsung is very often measuring a far higher heart rate than the Polar, but seems to become somewhat in sync towards the second half. The Skagen, however, consistently measures a much lower heart rate compared to the Polar. All in all, neither is very accurate or consistent. But if we had to pick one for squash, it would be Samsung. I'm not much of a runner, but running through this data, we see a few differences again. This time the Samsung consistently measures a lower heart rate in the first half, but the difference is minimized in the second half. The Skagen, similar to the squash measurements, tends to be on the lower side, but not as much of a difference as we saw with squash. We do see an odd peak over here though. For a run, neither is as accurate as we'd hoped in the first half of the run. The second half seems to bode better for the Samsung than the Skagen. So both for squash as well as for running, the Samsung wins. Not because super accurate, but because it's just less worse than the Skagen. One fun fact about the Samsung using Samsung Health is that it captures heart rate data every 10 seconds, whereas the Skagen and the Polar do it every second. And if we look at some more heart rate data, like the average and maximum heart rate, then the Skagen stands out again, and not in a good way either. Especially during squash, we see what we already saw in the graph before, a much lower average and maximum heart rate. On the run, we don't see a huge difference between the devices. I guess because the conditions were quite stable and predictable compared to a haphazard activity like squash. The Samsung and Skagen have a built-in GPS to track distance, whereas the Polar uses the GPS on the phone. The phone's GPS is the baseline here since it's more accurate. Here we see Skagen stealing the spotlight again, and not in a good way again, because the distance I ran was shown as considerably higher compared to Polar. It is a nice ego boost. Hmm, maybe it is a good thing? Anyway, the Samsung wasn't super accurate either, but it did better than the Skagen. The blood oxygen saturation, or SpO2 as it's called for short, measures how efficiently your blood is carrying oxygen throughout your body. The normal range is between 95 and 100%, the way we measured this was by using a medical grade finger pulse oximeter. We measured twice in the morning and twice in the evening on the pulse oximeter as well as on the watches. Now before we show you the results, we just want to mention that it takes a lot of effort to keep walking, running and squashing. Okay, anyway, to get these measurements. Not to mention looking like a patient in the ICU with all these sensors on us and then analyzing the results so we can make sense of it all for you. So we'd appreciate a like on this video and while you're at it, maybe a subscribe too for more wearable and audio content. All right, getting back to the boring, uh, I mean interesting stuff. Here are the results of the blood oxygen saturation readings in a box blood. In case you forgot your statistics, here's a short recap. The lines represent the minimum and maximum measurements. The box shows where 75% of the readings can be found. A rule of thumb, a smaller box and shorter lines are preferable. You can clearly see that the finger pulse oximeter is reliable around the 99% SpO2. No surprise there. Both Samsung and Skagen had 75% of their readings within the normal range of 95 to 100%. So that's good. But the Samsung is the least reliable since the spread of data is very large. The Skagen, on the other hand, measured a very low SpO2 once, but most of its readings were more consistent than the Samsung. Between the two, go for the Skagen here. Counting your steps has been around for a very long time. Like a really long time. But more recently, does anyone remember those jawbone step counters you attach to your trousers at the hip? Anyway, in order to test this, we went old school grabbed a good old tally counter and literally clicked every step. Once for 2005 steps and another time for exactly a thousand steps. Here you see what Samsung and Skagen measured and the percentage difference compared to the tally counter. Samsung did rather decently with reasonable accuracy. The Skagen was hit or miss since it deviated quite a bit on the 2005 steps walk. 
Accurate step counts aren't terribly important to us, but if they are to you, then go for the Samsung. So where does that leave us? Well, the Samsung took the cake from Skagen for the heart rate monitor and step counting, but Skagen proved to be better with its SpO2 sensor. Personally, the SpO2 sensor is the least interesting to us, but that's just because those measurements aren't as important to our life and health situation. We much prefer a more accurate heart rate monitor and step counter because that in turn translates to a more accurate measurement of workouts, calories burned, etc. For this reason, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 wins out for us. And also Samsung offers you more sensors like the body fat composition, which works with any phone a blood pressure and ECG monitor, which only work with Samsung phones. We've tested those in this video, so check that out. So if these sensors are important to you, Skagen does not even come close to the Samsung. And yes, we've omitted sleep tracking. We're working on it. If you're curious about the other features on the Galaxy Watch 4, then check out our full review on it here. And if you want to see a full comparison of the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 with the Skagen Falster Gen 6, then drop a comment down below. You've been filled with data and we've been DHRME. Namaste.